And we hope you enjoy our service tonight. We're here to glorify our Lord and Savior. Let's all stand, please, and we're going to sing, I'll Fly Away. All righty. As soon as the music cranks up, we have no piano player, so we're using our soundtrack that we used to use at the nursing home, all right? All right. Y'all ready to sing? Bobby, would you pray for us, please? Amen. Let's turn around and wave at one another. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Something I probably should have mentioned this morning and I failed to, uh, not that we don't have enough Williamses around. Of course, we never have enough Williamses around. Amen. But our missionary, our missionary to Honduras, guess what their last name is? It'd be Williams. Amen. Uh, Evan Williams. I don't know. Anybody remember the Williamses when they came through a few years ago? Brother Williams is from Ireland. Ireland. Yeah, he's from Ireland, and I mean, he has an accent. He has an Irish accent that you could cut with a butter knife. 
And somehow in my mind, I always remember him because here's a guy with an Irish accent going to Honduras as a missionary. And it just always kind of stuck in my mind. I want to read this letter to you, just a couple paragraphs out of this letter. Uh, He is back in Ireland right now. They're back there uh, because of the pandemic and some different things. And it says, since returning home to Ireland, uh, I have been able to continue my pastoral preaching duties in Honduras via Zoom. We did Zoom here for a while, so we know basically the same thing. Uh, We are six hours ahead of Honduras, so this means a very late night, three days a week, but we rejoice in the technology that allows us to attend the flock of God there. Pray uh, Pray for all of our ministries that God will bless the hearts and souls that we are reaching and for our national and lady missionary colleagues as they too fulfill their duties via Zoom. Now, if you've been watching the weather here over the last month, uh, they've got hit by two really, really horrendous hurricanes. Uh, Well, one was a category five, and then like three weeks later, they got hit with a category four or vice versa. It says, because of the two hurricanes that hit the northeast coast of Nicaragua, devastating the coastal region of Honduras as well, the government has lifted the restriction of movement. They had where they couldn't, they had there because of the COVID, they couldn't go anywhere. So they've, the government lifted that. With me being in Ireland and having uh, no male missionary colleagues to oversee or return to physical meetings, we have decided to hold off uh, and continue with the Zoom meetings until we get back. This is the part I was wanting to get to. We praise God that we have at least six candidates that are now awaiting baptism. And we plan to begin our church comeback with a baptismal service the first Sunday we meet. Please pray for the events as it is, uh, as it will be a milestone in this whole episode. So our missionaries around the world aren't sitting around drinking tea, eating donuts. These are folks, uh, uh, this gentleman here and his wife, his wife's name's Carmen. Uh, they, are, they are missionaries through BIMI uh, out of Nashville. And uh, these people are out working. They're out working for God. They're doing, they're doing something for, for God. They're doing something for Jesus Christ. And uh, take the time to read these letters. And I'm not going to stand up here before you and tell you that Gary goes back there and reads every one of those letters, and I'm not going to be the hypocrite that, <laughs> that, uh, because I don't read them all either. But try to take the time uh, to glance over them and read them. There, there's some good stuff in some of these letters if you take the time to read them. And shame on me that I don't read them more than I do. Amen. So with that said, Brother Junior, let's sing another song. Let's, let's sing another song. Y'all ready to sing? Old rugged cross. Let's all stand, please. Hey, Mom's favorite song. All right. We only got three verses of that to sing. There's only there's four, but we only do three. That's all the music we have is three. Yes, go ahead.
pray for the offering, please. Lord, and the Father, we thank you for another opportunity to come to your house, Lord. We love you and we praise your holy name, Lord. Thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ. He died on that old cross for us, Lord, so that we can go forward and spend eternity with you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Dear Lord, we just pray that you will be with our pastor as he travels today and as he comes back tonight with him traveling mercy. Praise you, Brother Joe, as he gives us the message tonight. Then we'll be coming with his family as they travel home this evening. Yeah. Be a good soldier. Yes. Dear Lord, we, we just love our church. We love our church family. We thank you so much for it. Lord, we do ask that you be with our members who are suffering and whatever passive, whether it's physical or spiritual. Lord, just ask you to touch each and every situation, Father. Lord, that's not you. Take this offering you're about to receive. Bless it, multiply, Father. May we use it in ways that will be pleasing to you. Yes, Father. We pray in your holy, precious name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Mr. Junior, can you run the sound booth, please? Yeah. child this was heaven's child in an earthen stable wrapped in glory meek and mild joseph wept with wonder as mary sweetly smiled because they knew this was heaven's child. The angels must have missed him as they sang him to sleep. But they marveled at the promises this baby came to keep. His father must have felt it was great sadness and great joy as he watched his little baby boy. Cause this was heaven's child. This was heaven's child. In an earthen stable, wrapped in glory, me mild Joseph wept with wonder as Mary sweetly smiled because they knew this was heaven's child Mary's little baby boy was Joseph's pride and joy and still the world could see that he was so much more this was heaven's child this was heaven's child in an earthen stable wrapped in glory meek and mild Joseph wept with wonder as 
Thank you, Miss Kelly. Beautiful song. Great job. Amen. 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 Uh, went out to eat with Brother Joey this afternoon, and we're in for a treat tonight. Brother jo Joey's going to break out a brand new sermon for us. Never seen the light of day. And he told me this afternoon, the reason it's going to be, he said, this is the best sermon that Miss Candace has ever wrote. <laughs> so, Brother Joey, come on up here and preach the word of God to us. Thank God for Candace writing these sermons. Amen. And also for Sermon.com. Amen. Tell you what, it's good to be back in God's house tonight. I appreciate this, this, uh, this afternoon and going out to eat with everyone. And uh, We went to the Chinese restaurant. Man, I had a good time. Good food to me, at least. Or else I was just really hungry. I don't know. But uh, they told me we was going to go out to eat, so I made sure I got out of here as quick as I could this morning. Now, they ain't said nothing about the night, so we might be here a couple hours. Hey, man, I'm playing with you. No, but uh, I do want to take a second, if you will, and just want to encourage you. Uh, we mentioned this morning, uh, Brother Gary did, about the youth meeting we, or the youth night we got coming up. Uh, I think it's in Jan January, the third Friday, whatever that date is, but uh, 15th. And uh, I do want to encourage you to try to come out to that uh, as far as young people. Try to get as many as you can. Um, God put this burden on our heart. Uh, this is our third year going into doing this. It's TNT. It's called Teen Night Talk. And um, I want to encourage you to, to get as many teens as you come, uh, uh, many, as many teens as you can to come out that night. I guarantee they're going to have a good time. And I know usually at our church, and I got to talk to Pastor Chris a little bit more to get some more details uh, worked out. Usually we have a good home cooked meal and stuff. Man, we, and then from there on out, it's like competition the rest of the night up until service. And that service, man, is usually pretty awesome. We, we try to have some young people that sing and play for us. And, and uh, man, I tell you what, the Holy Spirit just works in that stuff. I really want to push that, if you will. Jan uh, January 15th, and as far as the adults, pray for that. Amen. And uh, God's opened up some doors. We've had some other churches to kind of come and visit with us and some uh, teens also in the community. I was telling them earlier uh, today that, man, we've, well, you've heard me say we've had 25 to 30. We've had a few drop off a little bit because they've aged out and different things like that. But we usually aim this thing good for uh, the age group of 12 to 19. So even if you graduated high school, if you're 19 years old, we still want you to come out. I don't know how Pastor Chris, what, the, the, what y'all got as far as age here, but that's what we do down here for us. And Man, we just have a good time and sit back and worship. And what we try to do is open up an atmosphere for the teens just to be teens. Amen. Be good Christian teens. For them to have their time of worship, prayer time uh, is always a special time for us. For TNT also at the end of the night, uh, we give an opportunity for the young people to get down and really pray and give them time, you know, not rush them or nothing like that. So really try to pray for that thing, and I encourage whoever can to try to come. Uh, if, if you're here tonight and you're in that age group, I encourage you to bring your friends out just that one night at least. I promise you. Uh, you, you'll have a good time, and you'll be able to get out, amen, uh, on a Friday night. Uh, you know, I, I know it's not movie theaters, but I promise you'll be a whole lot better than that, amen. So uh, try to come out. Zechariah chapter number 3 tonight. I've already mentioned that's where we're going to be at, Zechariah chapter number 3. And uh, I was doing, uh, I was actually doing my devotion uh, a while back ago, and, and I'm actually in the book of Zechariah, my personal devotions, and and man, God just kind of opened this thing up to me, and whenever I read through it, and whenever I read it tonight, you're probably going to think the same thoughts that I was thinking. 
uh, whenever I read this. And I was like, man, I said, Lord, I said, it'd be awesome if I could just get some points on this. And I mean, within hours, God was just popping it in my mind right there. I was like, man, I got to hurry up and get this thing on paper. I mean, I, I'm ready to serve this thing. You know what I mean? And, uh, and it just so happened that Pastor Chris asked about me coming down here, and y'all are just the first ones to hear it. Amen. And uh, Candace ain't even heard this thing yet. And so I'm excited about it tonight. Uh, I'm, first of all, just to kind of open this thing up, I want to say I'm thankful I'm saved. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but I have never got over being saved. I thank God that somebody spent a little time with me to explain God's Word to me and explain that salvation is free and what salvation is and what Jesus did for me and how I was so special that He was thinking of me when He died on the cross and when He resurrected from the grave. Thank God that He defeated death, hell, and the devil himself. Amen. And He holds the key tonight. Amen. Thank God for that. And that excites me. And I don't know about y'all, but I want to build some excitement tonight. So if y'all will help me preach a little bit, amen, we'll have a good time tonight, okay? I promise you, all right? Zechariah chapter number 3, and I want to start right here in verse number 1. We're going to read through verse 5 if you want to follow along in your Bible. And the Bible says right here, and he showed, uh, and he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuked thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with uh, I will clothe thee with change of raiment. And I said, Let him set a fair mitre upon his head. So they set a fair mitre upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. Let's pray. Our heavenly Father, Lord, what a blessing it is on a Sunday night to be in your house. God, there's other places that we could be. We could be sitting at the house in the recliner. But God, we come here tonight. Because we come to worship and to seek you, God. And Lord, just to, to, to build our spirits and to stir our spirits, God, so we can get through this week, thumbing up. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, tonight that your message will not be in vain. And God, by the end of the night, we can say it's been good to be in your house. And Lord, I just pray that you'll just freshly anoint me tonight. God, use me in a, in a mighty way. And we'll give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, to understand the book of Zechariah, one must understand the book of Ezra. Back in 2 Chronicles chapter 36, we learn how Egypt has overtaken Jerusalem, making Elohim king over them and changing his name to Jehoiakim. We also learn how King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, captured Jehoiakim and took vessels from the house of God to put in his temple at Babylon. Jerusalem now he gets a new king uh, named Jehoashin. Uh, however, he is captured too by Nebuchadnezzar. And here it is, Nebuchadnezzar, he takes even more vessels from the house of God. Nebuchadnezzar has now made Zedekiah king over Judah, but we learned that Zedekiah did uh, evil in the sight of God. So here we are, we have an evil king ruling over God's chosen people. Now, God has tried using Jeremiah to warn the people of the judgment that would come. However, Zedekiah ignored him and furthermore rebelled against the man who had made him king, Nebuchadnezzar. The Bible describes Zedekiah as someone who has hardened his heart towards God. In 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 36, starting in verse 12, the Bible says this, And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God and humbled not himself before Jeremiah the prophet, speaking from the mouth of the Lord. And he also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, who had made him swear by God, that, but he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart from turning unto the Lord God of Israel. Now, God still had compassion on them, though, rising and sending more messengers or prophets, if you will, but the people continued following the abominations of the heathen and corrupted the house of God. The Bible says that the, they mocked the messengers or they mocked the prophets of God and misused his prophets to the point that God's wrath was so kindled that there was no remedy. 
We find God bringing in the, uh, the king of the Chaldees to destroy them, allowing them to take everything from the house of God to Babylon. Uh, Ezra chapter 5 verse 12, it says this, But after that our fathers had provoked the God of heaven unto wrath, he gave them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon, the Chaldean, who destroyed this house and carried the people away into Babylon. Now they, at this point they had burnt the house of God in their palaces, they broke down the wall of Jerusalem, and those who survived were carried captive to Babylon. Here the people of God will remain under captivity for 70 years. After 70 years, King Cyrus of Persia had overtaken Babylon and we found that Cyrus's spirit is stirred by the Lord and he makes a decree about the re reconstruction of the temple. Here we see the prophecy of Jeremiah unfolding. God's people will return to begin rebuilding the house of God. This is where the book of Ezra comes into the picture now, okay? You'll read that when Cyrus had made this decree that Zerubbabel had led many of the captivity back to Jerusalem and the construction had begun. It wasn't very long, though, that they started facing opposition from Satan through the children of Judah and Benjamin. This was attempted at first by um, uh, accommodation. Uh, if you know anything about the story, you'll see that they asked the rubble and the leaders if they could help in building the temple, but they were rejected for the fear of them causing opposition in building. Uh, they, wanted to, they wanted them to compromise. Ezra chapter 4 and verses uh, 2, uh, starting there, the Bible says this, Then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, Let us build with you, for we seek your God as ye do. And we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Ezer Hadan, king of Aser, uh, which brought us up hither. But Zerubbabel and Jeshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel and unto them, I'm sorry, said unto them, You have nothing to do with us to build a house unto our God, but we ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, hath commanded us. Okay, so don't fall asleep on me yet. Here it is, is that they have faced opposition whenever it comes time to uh, for reconstruction. Uh, they said, you know what, we'll compromise with you. We'll, we'll build with you. But here it is that Zerubbabel, thank God, was smart enough to not let that happen because they knew that, hey, in the past they have went to false gods before and they were scared that they would start uh, using these builds and stuff to serve false gods and stuff like that. So they tried uh, accommodation. Then they tried intimidation. They tried intimidating them, trying to cease the work of God. They discouraged them by hiring adversaries that caused them a lot of frustration. In Ezra chapter 4, uh, starting in verse 4, the Bible says, Then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose. All the days of, of Cyrus, king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Next, they tried accusation. They tried accusing them to cease to work. When the new king of Persia took over, uh, the people of the land wrote a letter to him calling Jerusalem a rebellious and bad city, saying that if, if, he, if he allowed the temple to be rebuilt and the walls to be restored, the people would not pay their taxes. That's what he tried accusing them for. After hearing the letter, the king made the decision to stop construction of the temple, which it did until the reign of Darius. Ezra chapter 4 verse 24 says, Then cease the work of the house of God which is at Jerusalem. So it ceased into the second year of the reign of Darius king of Persia. After the work ceasing, we find that the prophets Haggai, and this is where we get into our message, the prophets Haggai and Zechariah enter into the picture in Ezra chapter 5. The work is now restarting while Haggai and Zechariah are encouraging the people of God. Zechariah had been given ten visions between the first and sixth chapter of the book of Zechariah. The fifth vision that we had, uh, the, fifth, the fifth vision that he had is our text that we read tonight. Zechariah, he's seeing Joshua, and you got to picture this with me, he's seeing Joshua standing before the angel of the Lord along with Satan by his side, resisting him. The Strong's definition for the word resist is this here to act as an adversary or to oppose. And pretty much he's trying to slander Joshua. That's what the picture is right here. The picture is painted here is Joshua standing uh, clothed in filthy garments, which is a picture of sin, while Satan is taunting him before God. 
The Bible calls Satan an accuser of the brethren. If you look in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 10, it's obvious by reading what God said in verse 2 that God knows the condition of Joshua. Look there where it says this right here. It says, And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Notice what he says this. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? In other words, this is God saying, I know Satan that he's dirty. I know that he's filthy. Y'all see where I'm going with this already? I know that he's not clean. So we see here that, that God has, he has, uh, uh, he's already uh, knows the condition of Joshua here in this vision. Even though Satan is pointing out the filth of Joshua, God commanded that Joshua's filthy clothes be removed for his iniquity has passed, as the Bible just said. God has given him new clothes and a mitre to be placed on his head, just as priesthood. I don't know if you remember this verse or not, but in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 9, the Word of God says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness and to his marvelous light. What an excellent picture. Satan is rebuked and addition is made to the family of God. And though we have Satan tonight standing before God accusing us, we now have an advocate who pleads our case to God. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 2, verse number 1, My little children, these things write out in you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Thank God that Jesus is up there pleading our case tonight. Well, you see, we all have filthy clothes before, but praise God the day that we got saved, we received a new raiment because we became new creatures. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Those who are saved are birthed into the family of God. When Satan accuses us, Jesus is there pleading for us, and because he does, this is what it means right here. My ticket to heaven has been paid for. Thank God. Amen. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 20, For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Thank God that, hey, I got my ticket paid here today. You see, here it is as Zechariah, his vision is, is that Satan's up there and he's trying to tell God how nasty Joshua is and how filthy he is and how dirty he is. But God recognized that, hey, you know what? I know Joshua's not perfect. He recognized, hey, I know Joey's not perfect. Hey, I know Joey's dirty at one time. And I know he had some bad raiments on. I know he was filthy at one time. But you got to understand this right here. Hey, he says right here, I've caused thy iniquity to pass from thee. I've paid for his sins, thank God. I went to Calvary and I died on a cross for him. And you've got to understand this right here, that whenever that happened, and I died and I resurrected from the grave, I paid for every one of his sins, and I gave him a new garment, and I gave him a, a mitre upon his head. I put him in the royal priesthood tonight. Thank God here tonight that my ticket to heaven has been paid. Amen. Thank God, thank God, thank God. You see, you got to understand something tonight. You got to understand that salvation is an easy step. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter number 10 and verses 9, starting there, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For the Bible says right here, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You see, salvation is so easy tonight, and thank God it is. Amen. I'm thankful that salvation ain't something that you got to pay for. Amen. It's already been paid by Jesus Christ dying on the cross for our sins. I'm thankful tonight that it's not a due salvation, but it's a done salvation tonight. You see, all you've got to understand is that y'all help me out a little bit tonight. You see, all you got to do is acknowledge that you're a sinner and that you need a Savior. And I thank God on July 20th, 1995, that I, I realized that, hey, I was a sinner. I was on my way to hell and that I needed a Savior. And I'm telling you that tonight I called upon God's name and He saved me out of my sins. Amen. Yeah. Acknowledge you're a sinner and that you need a Savior. you got to believe in God and what He's done for you. Thank God that He holds the key tonight, church. 
Thank God that he took that lonely, that lonely trail up to Calvary and thank God that he, that he was hung on a cross and he died for my sins. Oh man, I'm telling you tonight that Calvary, yeah, I know it's a horrible place, but it's also a place of honor because that's where the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords defeated death, hell, and the grave whenever they put him in that tomb and he resurrected. Thank God that he got up from the grave. Amen. Hey, I know that tonight that I can only imagine just how the demons and the devil, how much of a headache they had whenever God stomped them in the head as the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter number 3 he says I'll bruise my heel but I'll bruise our head amen thank God that whenever Jesus he resurrected that I, I can just imagine here tonight I just wonder if he just kind of kicked Satan right in the face as he was walking out the grave but I'm telling you tonight I'm so thankful that he did I'm so thankful God hey, got up from that grave and I believe every bit of it tonight amen People say, well, how in the world do you believe in something that you've never seen? I, I, I'll tell you this right here. How can you not believe in it? Amen. I mean, here it is. We've heard people before who was drunk and always in bars getting saved and their life changing. Well, I, we've heard people before being wife beaters go home. And, and here it is, is that they're the best husband ever alive. There's a change in their life. How can you not believe that there's something out there that's doing that? Hey, I, I've, seen, I've seen people before uh, stuck on drugs. I've seen people before who was thieves and all this other stuff that people get, uh, get involved with. I've seen them be that kind of person. And, and God get a hold of them. God saved their life and pull them out of that mess and I've seen them serving church amen hey I'm telling you here tonight that how in the world can you not say that God don't exist there's something out there that changes people like that people tonight man they'll send people to a rehab and it seems like they keep uh, they keep uh, uh, going back to the drugs going back to the drugs but it seems like that whenever they actually get a hold of Jesus man that fixes everything how can you tell me there's not a God tonight we need to get excited about that acknowledge you're a sinner and that you need a savior believe in God and, and what he's done for you and confess all this to God salvation is so easy tonight I don't know if there's anybody here tonight that's lost I don't know if anybody's in here that's unsaved but I'm telling you here tonight hey you don't have to give a certain amount of money you ain't got to uh, uh, do certain things to get saved I'm just telling you all you got to do is confess that Jesus Christ is Lord confess your sins to him and surrender it's free Brother David came and he preached our TNT Christmas party the other night. And this is what he said. He says, I like free things. Amen. And salvation's free. And I, you know what? I like that. I like free things. And salvation's free. How come people don't accept that man is free? Salvation is an easy step. Let me say this right here. You need to understand that salvation is an eventful step. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 9, starting there, the Bible says, Know ye not that the, righteous shall, uh, that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor infinite, or, or abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And thank God for verse number 11, because this is what it says, And such were some of you <laughs> it didn't say you are amen it says such were some of you you know what I just told me right there that I don't have to change the salvation because salvation changes me such were some of you I used to be somebody hey I used to be a sinner a lost and undone and on my way to hell but thank God on July 20th 1995 when I gave my heart to Christ hey thank God I don't have to worry about it no more I'm heaven bound to hammer down and the devil can't do anything about it and such were some of you but ye are washed that's what it says but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. The Bible says that we are washed. Thank God I've been washed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. My, me and my, my family and myself, we sung this song not too long ago. Satan, you can't cross the bloodline. Amen. I love that. I don't know if you've ever heard that song, but you need to look it up. Man, I, it goes, I just got to tell you, Satan... You can't cross the bloodline. Amen. Because I've been covered 
by his blood. I've been washed, thank God, by the blood of Jesus. Man, y'all ain't excited like I am right now. Amen. I'm talking about the blood of Jesus Christ. I mean, nobody have a fit right now. Amen. Hey, we ought to say amen right there. I've been washed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been sanctified. I've been justified. I'm declared righteous by God. You got to understand that salvation is an eventful step. There's a lot that goes on whenever somebody gets saved, even though you don't do a whole lot. You, got, you understand what I'm saying? You don't do much, but I'm telling you right now, there's a lot that goes on whenever you get saved. You have a new challenge, and that is to live for God. Whenever you get saved, hey, your desire should be God. That, man, that's, that should be the time that you're on fire for God so, I mean, you're, you're on fire for God so much, man, you're just ready to charge hell with, with a water pistol. Amen. You can't wait to tell somebody. You can't wait to get your Bible in your hands. And you can't wait till church, the next church service. Amen. That desire, amen, is what I'm talking about. And that desire, where's your desire at tonight? Whenever you get saved, there's a lot that goes on. You want to live for God. Hey, you want to throw that garbage out of your, out of your radio stations and go, do away with them CDs and them, and, and them podcasts that they, they ain't worth two cents. Amen. Hey, you want to get some good godly music in your life. Amen. You want to do something for God. We should be excited about this. I mean, here it is, a person that has just passed from death to life. And we should be excited about that. We should be on fire about that. You see, salvation is an eventful step. There's a lot that goes on. Yeah, you don't do much of anything except just confess. But whenever you do, brother or sister, I'm telling you right now that the angels start singing up in heaven and they're glorifying God because here it is, that one sheep is finally found. Amen. And I'm telling you, there's a new desire. God puts a new song in your heart. He puts a new pep in your step. Amen. You have a new challenge. Let me say this right here. Hey, you are a changed creature whenever you get saved. Your personality would change. I mean, whenever you, God gets a hold of you, and let me say something right now, my God is big, and whenever something that big gets in something this small, it can't help but just leak out once in a while. Amen? And your personality would change. There's something different about that guy at work. He, he's, he's smiling this Monday. Don't he realize we still got five more days to labor? <laughs> Amen. God, help. The warden's going to be around before long. Amen. He's, I'm telling you, your personality would change. Your wife and your husband's going to say there's something different about I think about y'all. I just thought about that. Whenever Miss Norma got saved, uh, and if I ain't mistaken, uh, don't correct me right now if I'm wrong, do it after service. Amen. But there's something that Brother Billy said there was something different about Norma. He wanted to know what it was. I'm telling you tonight, church, your personality would change when you get saved. It's an eventful step. There's a lot that takes place in it. Personality would change. Your smile every once in a while. Amen. You get excited about the things of God. You choose God over worldly things. You choose God over worldly things. I got a little bit right there. We go. That's a little bit better. I'm just saying that you're a changed creature. Your personality will change. Your people will change. You're not going to want to hang around the same dope heads anymore. Amen. The same crack, and that's what they are. Amen. Say what you want. That's what they are. If you do drugs, you're drugs. Oh, you're, 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 you're doing dope. Amen. They ain't going to hang around the people who's drunk all the time. I'll preach it if they won't. I will. Amen. They're not going to, hey, they're not going to hang around that same whorehouses anymore. Amen. I'll call it out. That's fine. Can I get a little help right there? Your people will change. You're not going to want to go with your girlfriends anymore out there to the club and around. You ain't going to want to be with your buddies no more out there drinking and, and messing around. Your people will change. Your friends and your family will, be, will be become the ones of the church. 
One of your best friends ought to be your pastor. Amen. He ought to be one of your best friends. Your people will change. Your priorities will change. I got to go to church tonight. I don't got time to go to uh, go bowling. Amen. Hey, I ain't got time to go bowling. I got to go to church tonight. We got to go. Hey, we got to go do something for God. I got to go spend time with my family. I don't got time to hang around with you. I need a little help right there. I, I got to go spend time with my kids. I ain't got time to hang around with you all day. Hey, come on, help me out a little bit. Your people will change. Your places will change. You're not going to want to go sit on the bar stool. You'd rather sit in, the, in a choir seat out here. Amen. You'd rather go sit somewhere in the house of God at a revival service on a Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. Amen. Why is it that we got to pull teeth to come out here and for revival services with people? Amen. You shouldn't have to if they saved. They ought to get excited. I understand there's things that come up. But this right here is our place now. Being at home with your family is your place now. You see why? Because you've changed. You're a saved person now. You've got to understand salvation is an eventful step. And listen, you don't need to do all this. God will do it for you. Amen. Let me just throw that out there. Let me say this. You've got to understand salvation is an everlasting step. Glory to God. Amen. John chapter 4, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. I don't understand why people do not get that concept. Everlasting is everlasting. Amen. That means you can't lose it. Amen. Hey, and shall not come into condemnation. Notice what it said. Shall. It didn't say should. It said shall not come into condemnation. Let me read that one more time. It excited me a little bit. Amen. Half everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Salvation is an everlasting step. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Thank God I'm stuck to forgiveness. Amen. Amen. Thank God I'm stuck to forgiveness. Amen. Hallelujah. But I'm feeling good right now. My ticket to heaven has been paid for. That's what it means when Jesus is pleading my case. Satan may be accusing me, but Jesus is saying, I've already paid for that ticket. Amen. I've already got that one paid for, buddy. Can't touch that one. Can't cross the bloodline. Let me say this right here. It also means that my sin has forever been pardoned. Not only does it mean my ticket's been paid for, but my sins has been pardoned. Hey, and my sins has forever. I like throwing, I had to put forever in there. Amen. It just made me feel good. Amen. My sins are, has forever been pardoned. Amen. 1 John 1, 7 says, But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from A-L-L sin. All sin. From all sin. That's what the Bible just said. What does that mean, Brother Joe? It means that all my past sins. That's what it means. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 25, I, even I, and he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake, and will not remember thy sins. I like that last part right there. And will not remember thy sins. I'm thankful that God doesn't hold stuff over our head. I'm thankful that whenever we do goof up, God don't say, well, you know what? You remember that last time that you did this, right? I don't know about you, but I thank God that He has the power to forget sins. Amen. I believe that, and I don't know about you. Hey, thank God that He will not remember our sins. That's what the Bible says. He said He's blotted them out. He's blotted out all of our transgressions for His own sake. Here it is. Zechariah, he's, he's, he's got a vision, his fifth vision right here. And he's seeing Joshua. And he's seeing Satan and the angel of the Lord. And, he, and here it is, Satan's trying to, uh, he's trying to accuse Joshua, saying that he's filthy, saying that he's nasty, saying that he's no good because he's sin. Uh, he's done evil. He's done bad stuff. Here it is, God. 
and said, I know already. Didn't he come out the fire? I know he's dirty. But you see, you got to understand, I forgave his sins. Tonight, you're sitting here and you've probably got maybe one of the worst uh, testimonies that anybody's ever heard. Maybe you use that one person that's been out in the bar. Maybe you used to be a drunk. Maybe you used to be on drugs. Hey, maybe you used to run around with your wife or your husband. Maybe you used to beat your kids. Maybe you used to steal at work. Maybe you used to be the biggest gambler that there was. And, and you thought to yourself, that there ain't no way as many things that I've done wrong that God ever saved somebody like me. And I'm telling you tonight, there is the accuser of the brethren that's sitting there, Satan himself, trying to bring up everything in your past. And he's trying to bring it up and say that you're not worthy. You're not worthy. You're not worthy. But thank God for new clothes here tonight. Thank God that whenever you uh, got on your knees and you bowed and you prayed to God and you confessed your sins to Him and you accepted Him as your Lord and Savior that He blotted out every transgression. He can't even remember the sins according to what the Bible says. All my past sins, all my present sins. Psalms 103 verse 12, as far as the east is from the west, so far hath He removed our transgressions from us. I don't know about y'all, but I did learn this in school, that there's no meeting point for east and west. There is for north and south, but there's no meeting point for east and west. Man, I tell you what, that's a blessing right there. That is a blessing. Knowing that God will forgive sins and that He will hey, He will cast them as far as the east is from the west. This also includes all my future sins. 1 John 1, 9, it says this right here. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Man, my sins is forever pardoned. Thank God for that. My sins are forever pardoned. I don't know about y'all, but that just excites me tonight. I was sitting here and I was studying through this stuff. And man, I was just having a shout and fit myself. I kept writing and writing. I said, Lord, sooner than enough, this thing's got to stop. Well, it's going to be like a three-hour sermon. Amen. I was like, i got to cut this thing off and land this plane somewhere. I'm telling you tonight, it just excites me knowing that my sins are gone. I can't say it enough. My sins are gone. Lastly, tonight, let me say this. Jesus, he pleads my case. And because he does, this means that he's placed me in his family forever. He's placed me in his family forever. Now understand something tonight. We already know that salvation is forever. We believe that. Amen. We believe that once you truly get saved, that there's no sin that can ever take that from. The Bible says no man can pluck him out of my hand. He's mine. All that the Father giveth me, I shall in no wise lose nothing, lose nothing, none of them. John chapter 6, verse 39, And this is my Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. The Bible tells us in John chapter 10, and verse number 28, it says, And I give unto them eternal life. I give, I give. He said, he didn't say I charge, by the way. Amen. He didn't say I put it on his IOU either. Amen. He'll pay me back later. He says, I give. I give. Unto them eternal life. And this is what I like right here. And they shall never perish. I love that promise. He didn't say should. Didn't say might, didn't say possible, amen. But it said shall. I just like that word shall, brother Ken. I don't I don't know why I just love it. I love shall. Amen. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Satan, you can't cross the bloodline. <laughs> goody, goody, goody. <laughs> amen. Hey, he's placed me in his family tonight. You know what that means? It means this right here. It means that he knows me. I told you this morning, it's not if you know Jesus, but it's Jesus know you. 
You see, whenever I was saved, Brother Gary, I was birthed into the family of God. And now he knows me just like my wife knows me, my cousins know me, and my, my sisters know me, my aunts and my uncles. You see, family know each other. And thank God that because I'm in his family tonight, that he knows me. Amen. John chapter 10, verse 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they shall follow me. That's what the Bible just said. It says, I know them. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. He knows me tonight. He knows me, and because He knows me, He knows how filthy I once was. He knows how wretched I once was, but He also knows that I gave my life to Him, and I confessed my sins to Him, and because of that, glory to God, hey, that He's forgave me and saved me and gave me a ticket to heaven. He knows me. We have a personal relationship and we should have, and we should be close to Christ, by the way. Why? Because He knows us. We have a personal relationship. We need to be close to Christ. Amen. We need to be close to Him. Hey, we need to hug on Him. We need to love on Christ here tonight. Hey, ain't it a blessing that whenever your child comes up to you and just hugs on you, does it make you feel warm inside? Let me ask you a question tonight. Can we just let God know that we love Him and make Him feel warm inside tonight? Just love on God a little bit. Uh, Pastor Chris used to always talk about how he loves Shepherd climbing all over him and stuff. Can't we just climb on God tonight? Just climb all over him, just like a just like a little child, hey man, and just be loved on and be loved with God. Hey, hey, well, that's a personal relationship right there, and that's what we need. We need to be close to God, and we need to talk to Him, and He needs to talk to us. We have a personal relationship. Hey, we also have a public relationship. <laughs> Sometimes I bow my head and I think about this, Brother Junior. Because we don't need to be ashamed to be a Christian. But sadly, we've all have done that sometime in our life. And I can point out some stuff, and I guarantee you that you will say, you know what, I do agree with you now, but I'm not going to do that. But I'll tell you this right here. Christ sure was it a shame for us whenever he sat there on that cross dying for our sins. That was a public relationship right there. Because he sure didn't have to do that. He didn't have to lay on that cross. He didn't have to be hung and be picked on a mocked. But he did it anyway. And shame on me and every one of us here tonight Whenever the time comes that, you know what, we don't stand up for Him. Listen, it's easy to be a Christian when you're around other Christians. But what about by yourself? Do you stand up for Him then? Your work buddies know you go to church. But do you act like you're, you go to church whenever you're at work? Hey, we have a personal relationship. We have a public relationship. Hey, and thank God here tonight we have a persistent relationship. No matter how bad things get, we still know each other. God pleads our case tonight, church. This means, hey, He's placed me into the family forever. This means that He knows me. Let me say this right here. This also means that He's kind to me. Families should be kind to one another. The Bible says in Psalms, 100 verse number 5. Y'all help me in the night. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and His truth endureth to all generations. Notice His mercy is everlasting right there. Hey, thank God for that. Psalms 106 verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for He is good. For His mercy endureth forever. Psalms 107, 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. For His mercy endureth forever. Psalms 118, 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Because His mercy endureth forever. Psalms 118, 29. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. For His mercy endureth forever. Psalms 135, 3. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises unto His name, for it is pleasant. Psalms 136, 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. For His mercy endureth forever. Psalms 145 verse 9, the Lord is good to all, thank God. 
and his tender mercies are over all his works. The Bible just says that God's pretty good. <laughs> Amen. Thank God for his good grace and mercy in thy church. The Lord is good. His mercy endureth forever and ever to all generations. So I will stand up, sing praise, hallelujah, for I know the Lord is good. Hey, just as mercies alone shows His kindness tonight, Psalms 86 verse 15, But Thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy and truth. Hey, the mansion He's built for me shows His kindness. So, uh, the Bible says in John uh, chapter 14, starting in verse 1, it says, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again, receive you to myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Amen. Hey, I'm telling you here tonight, just as mercies, hey, alone shows His kindness, because God really should be giving us what we actually deserve tonight. Hey, the mansion that He's building for me shows His kindness, because I'm telling you here tonight, hey, I don't deserve anything that He gives me. Amen. Tonight, hey, I should deserve to go to hell tonight, but thank God that he promised that he's going up there to prepare a place for me in his father's house. Thank God. Hey, this means that he's kind to me. This also means that, hey, if I'm in his family, of course it means that I'm kin to him also. Galatians chapter 3 verse 26, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. That's what the Bible says. Y'all heard that? For ye are all the children of God. We're kin to Him. Amen? Hey, Romans chapter 8, verses 16, starting there, the Bible says this, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children and heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ, and so be that we suffer with Him that we may also, that we may be also glorified together. Thank God that I'm His child tonight. Oh yes, oh yes, I'm a child of the King. His royal blood now flows in my veins. And I who was wretched and poor now can sing, praise God, praise God. I'm a child of the King. Going back to our text tonight, after hearing the vision that Zechariah had about how God pleaded Joshua's case, how couldn't the people of God get encouraged after going through such a depressing time? After knowing that the wall, the construction for the wall and for the temple has been ceased because of people telling lies on them. Can you imagine how discouraging that was? Hey, how discouraging was it whenever you got ready to build that building across the street and all you heard was, well, you can't do it yet. You can't do it yet. You can't do it yet. You can't do it. For years and years and years. I don't know how many years. It's been a long time. 11 years of trying to build the temple. It's discouraging, ain't it? God used a prophet just to come in and shed a little bit of light. I don't know about you, but it excites me knowing that Jesus is pleading my case tonight. Amen. Amen. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Y'all can come on up. and We're just going to pray and y'all in the service however you want. Our Heavenly Father, I'm thankful for the opportunity once again to be here at Bible Baptist. And I've really enjoyed this message tonight. I know I have. Lord, from studying it to delivering it, God, it's, all I can say is, wow, Lord, you got some awesome thoughts that you give people. Lord, I just pray tonight as we leave this building, Lord, there's times that we face depression and we get discouraged. We want to give up and throw in a towel. But Lord, sometimes it just takes a little message of reminding us that Jesus is still on our side just to get us back excited. And I pray tonight that, Lord, this is excitement to just be like a spark in a dry field and just set fire. And Lord, people can get excited about the work of God, the things of God, the ways of God. And Lord, we look forward to one day being up there in that mansion. Lord, whenever that trumpet sounds... What a glorious day that's going to be. Again, Lord, thank you. 
and saving me. Pulling me out of mire clay and putting my feet upon a solid rock. We pray. We thank you. Asking all it is in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What a sermon. Once again, today's the day. Don't hesitate. Don't wait. Brother Joey, uh, see him after service. See me, Brother Junior. If you're a lady, see, uh, see one of us and we'll get you with a lady. Um, don't wait for tomorrow. Amen. Don't wait for tomorrow. Uh, you're, never, uh, you're never good enough to go to heaven. It's not what we do. Like Brother Joey said, it's not what we do. It's already been done. Amen. All we have to do is reach out and accept it. So uh, if, you're, if you're doubting, uh, see somebody after service. See Brother Joey or, or one of us, and we'll uh, we'll fix you. We'll get you. We'll get you to the right people. So, Brother Joey, you and Miss Candace make quite a team. She writes them, and you preach them. That's uh, that's all right. Amen. Amen. That was fantastic. Before you dismiss, yes, sir. We need to.